Hello and welcome back everyone. My name is Ryan Selvi. I'm a motion designer and a video editor here with Behance and Adobe. And I'm really excited to be here for day two. Uh, today we're gonna be going over some of the timeline basics in Premiere Pro, which is a really great way to organize footage and work out the way that you wanna tell a story, uh, whether that's a serious, uh, very, high level production value uh, asset for a client, or maybe it's even like a, a birthday video uh, for your niece or nephew. Today, we're gonna be working on a recipe video that I filmed with some friends. And yesterday we were going over the importance of proxies and the importance of um, working in the program so that everything works smoothly. Today, we're gonna be working with the timeline and how you can navigate your footage and get things all laid out into um, a nice narrative while also not wasting your time uh, just stuck in all of the footage. So very quickly, we are gonna hop right on into uh, Premiere. You can see here that I have my sequence setting set up. I created a new sequence, and I just wanted to call out a few things for you guys. One is that it is a vertical uh, composition, and this is because I shot in vertical, and this recipe video is for a vertical uh, media like TikTok or Instagram. Um, you can always go ahead and change these by creating custom editing modes but I wanted to really call out that this is 30 frames per second, and then my frame size is 1080 by 1920. So I went ahead and I called that Pi Tutorial. You can see that just like we were talking about, I have a bunch of categories where I have my footage and my sequences, and I'm set up for success because I am ready to edit and not get lost in where I am. Uh, so right now you can see that I created a little area here for proxies because we talked about proxies and the a, the importance of them and so i can see that everything that i have here is attached but you can also see that i went in and i right clicked into my metadata display and under metadata display i made sure that the frame rate was visible um, and so that just lets me know that i have different frame rates for my different footage and when you're editing footage you don't want to deal with different frame rates in the same composition without uh, allocating the proper approach for it. So you'll see here that I have 240.41 frames per second, 240.38, 240.42, uh, and even 60. And so I have an inconsistency of my frames per second, and we don't want that because these are actually slow motion videos. And for the slow motion videos, um, it has a lot of frames, but then if we bring it in, it's gonna try to supplement for it, and it's not going to look well. So what we're going to do is we're going to highlight all of this and we're going to go into modify and interpret footage. This will give us a new dialog box and um, in the very first, in the very top, you can see that the frame rate is right up here and it says use frame rate from file, but we don't want that. We know that our frame per second for our composition is going to be 30. So assume to this frame rate and it says one frame per second, that's way too slow for us. We want to do 30 frames per second and we're going to go and we're going to press OK. Then you'll see immediately that um, the frame rate has been updated in our project bin. Now it says 30 frames per second. We still need to do this one for 30, I mean for 60 frames per second. We want to change that in the same way by going to modify, interpret footage, assume this frame rate, and we're going to change that to 30 frames per second. So now whenever we go through and let's say we go and we drag this on in, into our composition, um, you're going to see that it plays in slow-mo just as it was shot uh, and in the way that we want it to be seen. So I went ahead and for our recipes, for all of our ingredients, we created some slow-mo introduction for all of the um, uh, content that we have. Now, a big thing that we're gonna be going over today is keyboard shortcuts. And keyboard shortcuts are really your key to success in um, uh, Adobe Premiere or just when you're editing in general. Um, and you can view these all because it can become very intimidating uh, just by going to edit and keyboard shortcuts. And this will really give you the opportunity to customize it to the way you are. I have it set up for just the defaults. I've learned a lot of the defaults and um, I think that they're really well laid out, but everyone works differently. You can really create some really cool stuff, stuff that already doesn't have keyboard shortcuts or maybe you're left-handed or right-handed and you wanna switch it up. So I'm just gonna go over a few of my favorites when we are assembling footage. Uh, and then you can use that to kind of compile your footage and make it work together. So you can see right here that when we were watching this, um, it was going really slow because it's in slow-mo and we had you know the time to throw the Rice Krispies, but um, I don't necessarily want all that before and after. And I just want the little area where the Rice Krispies are going back and forth. So we've already gone ahead and we've pulled it into our project, but 
what we're going to want to do is we can probably just go in and we can press C and that'll bring up our razor tool and you can cut right at the beginning. I'm going to go ahead. I'm zooming in with the plus tool. So I'm closer to my timeline because I have bad eyesight and um, the, the really easy navigatable keyboard shortcuts that you should always use are J, K and L. And it's really easy to remember because it's just left to right. J will rewind for you. you press it again. It'll go faster. K will stop it in its tracks. And then L will go forward, and if you hit it, it'll go faster. So it's just a really easy way so that you don't have to, you know, bring your hand to the mouse and move it all around. And that's what we're going to be using a lot for um, editing this footage. Now, I'm using the razor tool, but there are some other really cool things that you can do to not use the razor tool. And um, you'll see normally people will press V for the selection tool. You know, you would highlight and then you would go delete. But then you have this area, and you can click this area and you can click backspace and that'll bring it all the way to the front but rather than doing any of that actually and I'm going to press Control Z to bring that back um, all we're going to do is we're going to just click to the beginning here and if we press the um, uh, letter Q it will delete it and bring it to the front you can do that also the same with I'm going to uncut everything so it's all one footage again and let's say that I um, I want to cut here and here uh, and also another really good one that you can use um, I think is control K or yeah, control K um, and that will just split it right wherever your play marker is and you'll see that before when I hit Q it got ready all the way to the beginning of the sequence um, but in this case we've now developed a small little snippet of something uh, that has its own section and so rather than going in and pressing V selecting it deleting it clicking it pressing backspace rather than doing that um, since we have a little set little area, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to press Q um, with it selected. It's not going to do it because I, think I messed with my keyboard. But um, hypothetically, you can go and you'll be able to switch through that. Um, uh, what you're going to want to do next uh, is there's another way to add things into your footage um, or into your sequence, and that's with the source monitor. And the source monitor I have located up here in the top left. And um, if I double click into my footage, you'll see that it pops up here rather than in my program uh, project area. And the same sort of controls, we're gonna press J, K, and L to go forward or backwards. But rather than going and um, cutting it once it's already in the footage, I'm gonna navigate to where I wanna start, which is right here. I'm using J, K, and L. And I'm gonna press the I button for the in. And then I'm gonna press L. We're gonna go forward a little. I'm gonna press K again to stop it. I'm gonna press the O button. And you can see that this is being represented here with this um, little highlighted area as to the selection that I chose for my um, my section. And so then I'm gonna press comma, and it's just gonna automatically populate straight into my uh, my project. So let's do that for a few more things. Let's do it for the other recipes that we've got here. So I'm gonna double click. Um, you can also click and drag here because I want to preview it. You can see that in this one in particular, we had thrown it a few times and we wanted to get the right look. So I want to kind of drag and I'm like, oh, maybe that looks good. Um, and so I can just navigate with my cursor as well. Press I, then move forward and then press O and then press comma. And then what, what do you know? It's right there again. So let's do it just one more time. I think we're going to do two more times. Uh, we're going to navigate to the beginning, I, O, comma, here, check it out, let's check it out, let's check it out, look at that Caro, I had a really hard time finding that Caro, um, I walked around the grocery store, lots and lots for that, I, O, comma, what's this, ooh, oh, could it be the ice cream, the best part of the entire thing? All right, what do you guys think about that? I think that's pretty good. So we're gonna press I, we're gonna go, press O, we're gonna press comma. All right, so now we have all of our ingredients here. We're gonna go ahead um, and we're going to just watch it, but it's going really slow. So um, we'll notice that we can maybe even wanna trim down a little bit of the area before. So let's go here and I can go, can drag it like that and then go and go backwards space um there's actually a way that you can update it though so that you can go and um when you press like um i think it's here 
and you hold down control and then you drag it to the side, it will automatically do what a ripple cut is. So you'll see that I brought it in and it moved everything to the left so that I don't even have to go in and click and delete again. So um, there are ways that you can do all this stuff, but it just maybe takes a little bit longer, um, has a little bit more clicks or steps, and um, then by default, it will then um, kind of increase the amount of time that you're working on a project. Um, but you can see here that uh, some of these might be going a little bit, like even though they're slow-mo, I might want them to go a little bit faster. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna select what I want. I'm gonna press R, which is gonna bring up this little guy that has a little cross through it because it's um, saying that I can't do it right there. But um, I can click here and um, you can just drag it in and you can see the duration is gonna change. And with R selected, it's gonna actually change the um, speed at which the, um, the project goes. Ta-da! So maybe we wanna go a little bit faster than that. Um, here, Whoosh. I think that's good. We're gonna do a voiceover for all this stuff, so um, we don't have to have stuff stand there for too long, but um, I'm gonna do a Control K. Uh, like these guys. Also make sure that my audio is also good. We're gonna go through and we're actually gonna delete all this audio because we're not gonna use any of it. So that's totally fine. Um, this is a live stream at the time of filming. Um, glad to have everybody watching the replay, but also just wanna say hello to everybody in the chat. Thank you guys for being here. Um, I see that Mark says, where do you place your paper sticky note with the hotkeys? Uh, well, the good thing is you don't even need to have a uh, sticky note because you can always just go here to edit and keyboard shortcuts use a keyboard shortcut to get there as well. You can do control alt K and it will pull up this area. You can, if you're like me and you have a second monitor, you can put it off to the side. Um, you can, uh, you know, screenshot it and set it as your wallpaper. <laughs> it can, it can be whatever works best for your flow. Uh, also after some time, you will just, it will just come to memory and you'll just be able to work with them. Um, there's also something that you can do where it's like, let's say that we had this above here and it was extended uh, we didn't want to necessarily delete what we have so we can do control K this creates its own clip um, and if you go to shift E that can enable and disable a uh, a section so you'll see that it's still there but it's like blacked out and now when we go over top of it um, it will only show what is underneath so if we want to bring it back we just click again shift E and then we have our footage back. But we don't want that footage anyway, so we're gonna delete it and we're gonna put everything on the same level. Um, also, you can see that with um, Shift K or Control K, uh, it works off of what the selected toggle tracks are. So just make sure that what you want on is um, properly selected. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna press R again. We're gonna set up. Crispy, PC's peanut butter, the best peanut butter. Um, we have Hershey's, big Hershey's. I can't believe I just said that on an official stream, but that's okay. Um, then we have Caro, pressing R again, up a little bit. Uh, here pressing backspace, and we're also pressing R. This now sometimes, um, I will go through and if I have footage that I know is gonna be modified and is interpreted, I will often go through and select them. Um, in this case, it's all these guys and uh, make sure that I go to a label and just give it like a, this a different little color just so that I can then identify it when it's in the source bin, just because it is gonna be a little different. Um, but uh, see now that we have sections and we might even wanna speed them up a little bit more but, um, or like modify how quickly they move, but at least they're all within technically the same frame rate. So when we speed them up or bring them down, it still feels familiar to base that work. Um, next, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna continue to work through our source material. Here we have a, um, a thing of opening up. We're gonna press I, go, O, I'm gonna press e comma, um, same sort of thing, where we're gonna get rid of the audio. But I'm realizing that I don't want any audio whatsoever. 
Um, so what I'm going to actually do is I'm just going to deselect all these little blue areas. And then you'll see now when I go ahead and I'm going to drag it in just to show you guys, we're going to continue to do the comma thing. But um, as you go in, it now won't even bring it into that area. And let's say that like I wanted to continue to edit footage, but I didn't want to accidentally go over um, what I already have. You can also do here um, and it will help you. So it'll automatically snap to the area that you want to go. Um, and the main tracks and the tracks. Um, continuing to work in the source mode, I'm gonna go to in and out um, or JK and L to move forward. Um, it will also preview the audio for you. One thing that you can use if you get lost in your timelines, like let's say you get zoomed in too much or you um, just like wanna easily navigate how to get to spots, you can always use the, um, uh, the home and end buttons if you have a full keyboard or if you're on, um, you are on Mac, you can always do, what is it? I think it's FN left arrow and FN right arrow. Um, and so I just did the in and out again. I'm gonna press the comma, but boing. Um, I had forgotten that we reselected these, so we're gonna unselect that. Uh, and then we're gonna go through, same sort of thing. Peanut butter. Now we can already see though that um, maybe this isn't the um, the order that we want to have. So the beauty of it is that we can <laughs> bring a bring a peanut butter. Go through, and then we can go. We can preview again. Um, we'll see that this right here is not to the size that we want it to be because our composition is larger than what is shown here. What you can do is you can right click. And then you'll go to either scale to frame size or set to frame size. Now these are two different, very two very similar things, but different. Um, for the scale, you can see right now we are in the assembly section, but it's the editing section. Uh, it will rework your workspace to show you a little bit something. But you'll see that now it says scale 100 still. Whereas if you go in and you go to um, scale to frame size. Uh, it is gonna update to 200. Oh. oh, here we go, so yeah, here we go. So set to frame size brings it to 150 because it's gonna make it bigger. But if you do um, scale to frame size, it's just gonna be 100. So I normally just personally stick um, to set to frame size just because then I can see it as a visual marker to know that it is larger. Um, if you're working with like graphics and you know that you won't have to mess with the scaling of it again, um, you can always go and just do scale to frame size, but, um, it's, it, it's one preference and two just organization based off of what you're going to do. We're not going to really pan into this, so it's not going to pop up, but, um, nevertheless, it's a, a favorite that I have. You can also go here. You can see that these are now two different things. Um, there's still one and the same. You can go ahead and you can press um, Control C on top of it. And then if you were to go over and you do Control Alt B, it pops up and says paste attributes. And it's asking you what you want to paste um, onto this selected uh, piece of um, material. And this material in particular, let's say that there's like a motion, there is a opacity, there's time remapping. We don't care about time remapping. We don't care about opacity. But under our motion is where our scale is. So I can press that and I can press OK. And it's automatically going to scale it up to match the other one. So this is really good if you have a lot of footage that are all a little bit too tiny. And um, you won't need to um, increase more than one and make sure that everything is all the same. So we're still in assembly. So I'm going to go back to assembly real quick. Um, and we're going to continue to navigate. If you need to really zoom in, you can zoom in with the plus and minus keys. Uh, I just want to show you guys up again the um, the home button and the end button. Get me to the beginning and the end as to where I need to be. Um, you can see that there FX has turned yellow because there's been a modification for it. And you can also see that in all the things that we've already done because we were messing with the time remapping of all of these files and we were messing with the scaling of these files. Um, then we can go here, jump in. We're going to look at our source monitor again, like this. Okay. Um, this is one we already added, so let's go to 97. 
have beautiful hand opening. Oh, we're gonna press the comma. Uh, you will see there's a little area between. We don't want that, so we're gonna go ahead and press backspace. Go in, O2, thing, um, in, out, comma. And you'll see that my play marker is a little bit off, so I'm actually gonna go to the end to make sure that it lines up uh, perfectly for the um, area. So. Then we're going to go um, to here, and we're going to open up the source monitor again. Uh, we're gonna use J, K, and L to navigate where we need to. All right, that looks like it's a good spot to stop, so we're gonna press O, beginning. And remember, we can always control the speed at which we're navigating. So if you want to go faster or slower, you can tap the button again, and it will um, then adjust accordingly to be fast forward or rewinding. Um, but I like to normally kind of just go in with regular speed as I'm kind of getting to know the footage. And then the longer that you're in the project, the, long, the more you'll like want to speed things up and get it out. Um, so I said I.O. I'm going to put a comma there. I'm going to bring it here. Um, and we're just going to continue to do more or less the same thing over and over again. So we have me violently opening this Rice Krispies. Um, at comma. And you can see this is really starting to come together. But, you know, as we had before, now we have these two. And we can do the same thing where we can do um, the Control-Alt-V. And once again, that paste attributes will show up. And this time we only have motion selected. So if we press OK, you'll see that now both of these are done. So it actually came into, into use case. We did, didn't highlight these when we were doing Control Alt V, same sort of thing. Go ahead and press OK. Continue to have these made. So we're already at 15 seconds here. If we're thinking of TikTok, we're, we're on a good trajectory. We're looking at the rest of our footage and we're, we're seeing that um, we've got a little bit of um, steps to go through. Uh, we got the Rice Krispies here. So, comma. I don't know, did we accidentally write some stuff? So we'll just Control Z. Let's see if we did that. We did. So we're going to go back to end. Then we're going to come back into our source monitor. We're going to make sure that we're uh, selected into the source monitor. It's a um, it's conscious of like what is highlighted in blue. So if you're doing things that's not popping up into the models that you want it to be, that's probably just because you might be selected in the wrong area. Uh, so just make sure that you see when I hop down here in my project bin, it's going to be blue. Um, we're gonna do the same thing because the Rice Krispies need to do two cups. So we're gonna have one come from the other side. Go, press O, press the comma. Um, have a mixing of sorts. Oh, this is us adding it, that's what it is. Uh, in, out, comma. And you'll see that still, since we don't have that A1 selected, we don't get any of the audio. We can hear it when we're viewing it, but we're not gonna be getting it into our product because we didn't ask for it. Right. Mixing it, beautiful hands. Uh, and if you download the source footage, um, which I guess I should probably go over because we're about to close out for the day. Um, but if you download the source footage and you can use this for your delight and you can also make your own snack, I hope for you to um, please check that out. Uh, you can hear the shenanigans that we have as we talk over top of footage. And uh, you can see uh, we're actively talking about what we <laughs> need to film and what we don't need to film. It's all part of the process, baby. Um, and uh, closing it out, we're going to put it in. Refrigerator. We're gonna try to up with me out. Da, 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 da. It's frozen. Peter gave us a tap tap and a thumbs up. Let us know it's frozen. Thanks, dude. Uh, and that's when you add the ice cream. Big shout out to my friends, Peter Favender and Ursula Prinz uh, for helping me out with filming all this stuff. Uh, we had a really good time. And we're gonna be color correcting and um, working on graphics um, in some of the upcoming videos. So make sure you check those out. 
um, and you can really help to make this project turn into something that you would actually see on TikTok. I'm not a TikTok star, but I have an okay idea as to how you'd edit them down. Um, I'm just doing the same thing here, I and O and comma. I, I tend to actually like to click around as well um, just to navigate it myself. J, K, and L normally works out for me when I am down in the timeline itself. Um, but I think chocolate drizzle here, comma, and there's me with it. Woo. I, O, carry out. All right, guys, so we are at um, about 25 minutes. Uh, I mean, so you'll see that we'll continue to work on these together, but now we at least have our full timeline and our whole recipe all laid out. Uh, we'll be checking on ways to add graphics to it and some voiceover and uh, also coloring it so that it looks a little bit more consistent because some of these shots are way more yellow and other shots are way more white. Uh, but just stick with me and um, we will be able to go over it and we will make you a wonderful recipe video that you can make for yourself, whether it is the same exact um, creation or it's maybe something else that you want to teach me how to do. That said, um, I would love to see what you guys are doing in the Discord. So if you just go to the Creative Challenge for Premiere, uh, it's actually at behance.net slash challenge premiere. You will be able to um, join the Discord. You'll be able to talk to others that are going through the same thing, get the assets. You can see the timeline basics was here today. It'll also have a link to watch the video. Um, once again, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, this is my second day um, doing a Premiere video and it's really exciting and I'm really enjoying it. I love being able to teach you guys. So thank you for being here with me. Thank you for your kind words. Thank you for everyone that was being really supportive in the chat. I have a lot to get through, so I can't say hello to the chat too much, um, but I'm really looking forward to seeing you guys uh, in the next video. And uh, make sure you keep watching and subscribe. And I'll see you soon. Thank you so much. Goodbye.